Hello, I'm Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D. Today I'm going to do a review of the Longer LK5 Pro. It's an affordable FDM 3D printer that was sent to me by Longer so that I might try it out and give my opinion on it. Anyone who has seen my channel before has seen that I like to dabble in many different things from injection molding to CNC and laser engravers, but it was 3D printing that really got me started down the path of all of those other things. I've been a huge fan of 3D printing for a number of years now, but really have not upgraded my beloved i3 clone since I started. What do I like about this printer? What do I think could be improved? Well, let's find out. First, the Longer LK5 Pro came very well packed with everything tucked away in thick red foam. If you get a shipment from me in the near future and wonder where the red packing foam comes from, now you know. I like to recycle all of it. The first thing I noticed was how few pieces there were to assemble in the box. The printer comes 90% pre-assembled with only a few things that need to be attached. This is such a stark difference to my original 3D printer that came in hundreds, if not thousands of pieces, and took me two days to put together. The instruction manual for assembly that came in the box was okay, but really wasn't the best and might be slightly confusing, especially if this is the first time you have put together a machine like this. There is even a new heat bed cable support part that is not in the instruction manual at all, but directs you to a video that is included on the micro SD card on how to install it. Also on the micro SD card is a really good video that shows you how to put the machine together. I would recommend skipping the written instructions and just watch the quick video on how to assemble the machine. I probably had the machine together in 10 minutes after watching the video once. The company goes out of their way to make sure you select the proper voltage rating for your country. This is to make sure you won't damage your machine by using the wrong voltage. With the machine fully built, I was pretty happy with the build quality and was really happy with how quickly I was able to go from opening the box to my first print on the machine. So now for a few specs on the machine, and then I'll talk a little bit about my experiences with printing with it. The longer LK5 Pro comes with a 300 by 300 millimeter on the XY and 400 millimeter on the Z. The frame and almost all the components of this machine are made out of metal. This is also an upgrade to my old machine where many of the axis plates were acrylic. All of these plates seem to be powder coated steel. The Z axis is also supported by two incline rods that create a triangle structure to really support the rigidity of this machine. The machine has a heated bed with a removable ceramic coated glass top. To be honest, I always preferred a magnetic bed, but in all the prints that I have done on this machine, I just printed, waited for the glass to cool, and the part popped right off without any trouble whatsoever. No more hairspray, glue, or tape. I just made sure the surface was clean, hit print, and everything stuck and popped off just fine. The Longer LK5 Pro comes with a 4.3 inch color touchscreen that was both easy to use and very intuitive. No more knobs and scrolling through menus for me now that everything is at my fingertips. The printer is open source running the Marlin firmware, which would allow you to add on accessories such as the BL Touch for auto leveling of your machine or any controls or accessories. You could also try the new beta for Marlin 2.0 if you wanted to. The motherboard is also fitted with Trinamics 2208 stepper drivers on the X, Y, and Z axis to reduce the noise of the stepper motors themselves, but for some reason, it's not on the extruder. I have used similar drivers on my old machine and have to say they make a big difference in the noise. The feet of the LK5 is a fairly short Bowden setup with this blue Teflon Bowden tube that is supposed to withstand higher temps of up to 280 degrees Celsius and have less clogging issues. Behind the frame is the extruder with the built-in filament runout sensor to make sure you don't run out of filament mid-print. Another feature of this machine is the resume function if the power ever goes out. From the test that I did, I was able to shut off the power, and when I turned the machine back on, the screen asked me if I wanted to resume from the last location. From what I have seen of this, it seems to restart from the last layer it was on, but starts that layer all over again. I also noticed that if you kill the power a second time, the job would not resume, but would cycle the machine as it, as it normally would. 
On the micro SD card, in addition to having a few printable models and instruction videos, they also give you a copy of their slicer, as well as a profile instructions for adding this printer profile to Cura, which is what I use. It was great to have everything set up already in my slicer of choice and made printing my own models super quick and easy. So now on to printing. The first thing I did was to level the bed. This can easily be done by using the leveling button on the screen and using a piece of paper and the knobs to adjust the heat bed until the paper just catches under the nozzle. A few times around and I had everything dialed in pretty good. I inserted the micro SD card, clicked on files, and printed the calibration cube that came on the card. There are a few models that come on the card with the machine, which is nice for people getting into the hobby where they can print right away before learning any software. Right out of the gate, the bed heated up and printed the calibration cube. The dimensions were pretty good and well within the acceptable tolerances, especially given the ease and quickness that this machine went together with zero tweaking other than leveling the bed. Before the print starts, the LK5 Pro draws a line to prime the plastic, and this brought up another appreciated point. I was printing in white, but the primer line started off black, which tells me the hot end must go through some testing or quality control process, which is a nice touch and very nice to see. With the test queue printed, I went for another file included on the card, and I printed the famous Benji model. Believe it or not, in all the years of my 3D printing, I have never printed a Benchy model before. I thought it did a pretty nice job, but I did notice there was an area above the door frame where it almost looked like the Z-axis skipped a step. But after looking online, I see many pictures of the Benchy with this feature in the same spot. Some have it and some don't. I feel like this might have more to do with the way the file was sliced than the printer itself. With the Benchy out of the way, I thought I would go much, much bigger. I have never had a build volume this large, so I wanted to go for broke and print a much larger model. 16 and a half hours later, I finished one of the best looking models I have ever made. In all honesty, this model printed very well. You can see some areas where the plastic has sagged, but that's really this model with some pretty huge overhangs and should have been printed with supports. This model came out pretty amazing, especially considering it's only two layers thick and completely hollow. Also again, I have become a fan of the ceramic coated glass top as the model popped off pretty much by itself as the glass cooled. The last model was handsome and all, but I really wanted to push the bounds of this machine and give it a real torture test. This Eiffel Tower model is somewhat notoriously difficult to print. With all of the tiny railings, overhangs, and movements, I have seen many people have issues printing it. I scaled the model up over 300% and started printing. 40 hours and 12 minutes later, I had this amazing Eiffel Tower model. To date, this is the longest and largest single 3D print I have made. The LK5 Pro did a really nice job of capturing the details, and this model came out much better than I expected. I have not cleaned up this model at all so you could see how it turned out. There's a small amount of drooping in certain areas, and a little bit of stringing, but that's to be expected with a non-supported model with as many tiny pillars and overhangs as this model has. I was very impressed with how it came out. So I knew I could do big, and I knew I could do small, and now I wanted to go for accuracy. So I made this print-in-place iris box remix by Lobo CNC to see if the machine could be accurate enough to print a model that prints all at once and has interlocking pieces but is movable after printing. Again, the longer LK5 Pro machine did great. Also on the micro SD that comes with the printer is a file for a replacement fan shroud that comes on the LK5 Pro. The fan shroud is the only part of the machine that I notice is 3D printed, so it's nice that they put that on the card as well. After printing the model, I was actually kind of surprised to see that it seems to be an updated model to the fan shroud that is currently on the machine, so I, I will probably print this again in black and try it out on the machine soon. So for my final thoughts on the machine. I will first go over what I really like about this machine and then go over what I felt could be improved. 
first, I really loved how easy it was to put this machine together. I just took it out of the box, popped on a few bolts, plugged in a few terminals, leveled the bed, and it was pretty much it. Now, there is something to be said for building your own machine from scratch with all of the components. You really get a sense for how the machine works, and it helps you down the line whenever you need to fix anything, but it may not be what everyone likes to do, and some people really just want to start printing, and this machine did that with minimal setup. I love the fact that this machine is super stable with the triangle support frame. Everything is well built, and I love how Longer went out of their way to make sure everything was well put together with no exposed aluminum extrusion like I had on my previous machines. I love how other than plugging a few things in, I really did not have to mess with any electrical, and the machine comes with a fused AC power switch. I really also like the glass top. I honestly didn't think that I would like it since I've been using the magnetic bed recently on my other machine, and I was really impressed with the adhesion and more impressed with how easily it was to remove the parts. The LK5 Pro also comes with a spatula to remove parts, but I'm not sure that I would use that on glass, and if everything keeps going the way it has, I'm not sure I will ever need to. I'm also a fan of the color touchscreen. It's a really nice touchscreen, and I feel like all of the menus and such are really easy to read and intuitive. It really does give the machine a look of professionalism, which I like. And lastly, I think the machine performed very well at all of the tasks that I've thrown at it so far. Now time will tell how well this machine holds up, but I feel the quality of the build is pretty high with all metal parts and sturdy features, so I feel like it'll hold up just fine. Now on to things I felt could be improved with this machine. First thing I noticed again out of the box was that the written instructions were a little hard to follow. I honestly would have preferred if there was just a paper in the box that only directed me to watch the videos on the micro SD card. Those videos were really nice. Just a personal preference, maybe I'm just more of a visual person. The second thing that I thought might be improved are the fans to the motherboard and the power supply. The TMC2208 drivers on the motherboard keep the stepper drivers quiet, but the other fans are not so quiet. It's not a huge deal, and if I really had an issue with it, I would replace the fans with some Noctura fans instead. The third thing that I'm not a huge fan of, and this is not specific to this machine, but I honestly prefer not to have the spool holder attached to the printer frame itself. I feel like this adds a lot of extra weight to the machine and could cause some unnecessary wobble to the machine. I much prefer the Ultimate Spool Holder by Tush. It provides a much smoother and consistent motion of the filament and I really like that. The fourth issue I ran into was with the guide wheels that were on the back of the x-axis. I'm not quite sure if the wheels were on too tight or if it's just peeling off the top layer from manufacturing, but I did have a little disintegration on the wheels during my first two prints. I just wiped it off and it really has not been an issue since, but I thought I might mention it as something to look out for. The fifth issue I had was the way the machine goes through the leveling process. I feel like it's best to go through the leveling process with the bed heated up to the temperature that you'll typically print at. However, I found that if you heat up the heat bed and then press the leveling buttons, it turns the heat bed off. I really would have preferred if it kept the heat bed turned on to make sure nothing has expanded or contracted because of the heat. The last thing I noticed was lacking was the fact that the printer did not come with a USB cable to connect the motherboard to your computer. This is what is needed to update the firmware and any other tweaks you want to make to this open source machine. Again, it's not a huge issue for most users, but it would have been something nice to add. So, would I recommend this machine? At the current price that is about the same I paid years ago for my smaller i3 clone kit with less features, I think I would recommend this printer. The large build volume, all metal stable design, and easy to use interface I think is really good printer for those who are just getting into the hobby or those who have been around it for a while. Again, this machine was sent to me for free so that I might give my opinion on it, and I was also even asked to give my feedback, which I sent back to the company, so we'll see if anything gets better. I plan on using this printer a lot more. If anything changes or evolves with time, I will be sure to give some updates. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos coming out soon. 
There is also an affiliate link in the description that helps the channel out if you decide to go with this printer, but either way, I hope you found this video informative and helpful in some way. Hope to see everyone next time. Bye.